I'd like to start with uh, Minister Carl Bildt. As Minister Dautola have said, you have just established the world's uh, newest diplomatic group, we could say, uh, thanks partly to Monocle magazine, <laughs> who have chosen these three countries and three foreign ministers especially because of their uh, increasing influential uh, diplomatic initiatives. First of all, let me ask you, how do you like being in Turkey, being in Izmir, being a guest of uh, Minister Davutoglu? What are your first feelings? Well, first and first, I'm, I'm, I'm in Turkey quite often and, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a very sort of intense relationship uh, both between the nations and the two of us. And uh, So I come to Istanbul and Ankara and other places very often. I have never been to Izmir. <laughs> And that's why I've been here an extra day to go around and learn something more about this part, impressive part of Turkey, see the economic potential, the port, the university, the business. Um, so that's, that's been important. Mm -hmm. Then of course, um, yeah, it was a magazine that found out that the three of us could be a combination. <laughs> I think we knew that already to yeah. some extent, mm -hmm. but they made an element of marketing for us. Um, <laughs> Which has been good, perhaps. You're no stranger to Turkey, though. Uh, no. You were very influential in the European Union, obviously. But also, uh, as part of your job as envoy to Balkans on no. Bosnia, you have worked closely with Minister Davutoglu. So, uh, you are, when you look at the future, do you see a promising trend there as this trilateral process? Where would it go after this point on? I think we find it, I mean, we represent three different countries, different parts of Europe, different parts of the world. Uh, we come with our different perspectives, obviously, historical, geographical, or whatever. But I think that we find when we talk to each other that we have uh, fairly common approaches in spite of that. Mm -hmm. And that I find very sort of constructive, that in spite of the differences that are there, that we come together and we can discuss on that basis both uh, global issues and other issues and find ways of working together. We've been working on sort of internet freedom to take one of the issues in the Human Rights Council in the UN, mm -hmm. but uh, quite another, other issues which I understood from the Turkish, which I agree with, that we've also been working together mm -hmm. on. Mr. Patriota, pleasure to have you here as well. Uh, you are also no stranger to Turkey and Turkish foreign policy. We know that Turkey and Brazil have worked closely, especially on the Iran uh, nuclear mm -hmm. deal. But also, Brazil is a rising uh, power, obviously, a superpower on its own. And we know that we look at US, China, uh, these countries are more absorbed in their own problems. The European Union trying to hold together its economic house. How do you see this trend in diplomacy? Countries like Turkey, uh, Sweden, Brazil coming together, forming alternative groups for uh, dialogue, for initiative. How do you see that trend? Well, first of all, let me say how pleased I am to be at Izmir. And uh, although I haven't been as frequent a traveler as uh, Carl, <laughs> it is the seventh time I come to Turkey in that's eight not years. Too bad. So that's, not, so too that's bad. not so bad. And uh, I've experienced uh, the entire process of coming closer together with Turkey mm -hmm. since the first visit by a foreign minister in 2004 mm -hmm. to the establishment of a strategic partnership. And today, I think we start 2013 in a mm -hmm. very good stride with this meeting here at Izmir, where we'll be able also to address all the ambassadors of Turkey. But I believe, as Carl was saying, that the three countries, they have a lot to gain by coordinating more closely. Uh, we are three strong economies, three democracies, uh, three countries that have a very strong stake in the multilateral system, and we've been coordinating in uh, contexts such as peace and security, environmental issues, human rights. We were very pleased, uh, uh, for example, to host not only the King of Sweden, but the Prime Minister also at Rio Plus 20, recently mm -hmm. in Rio, as well as the Prime Minister of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, which uh, I think is um, testimony to the commitment of the three countries to sustainable development uh, as an agenda and also to improved governance at the United Nations. Uh, so I hope that at this meeting here at Izmir we can strengthen our ties and continue to identify issues from uh, support for Palestine observer status at the United Nations to a uh, peaceful transition in the Arab world within the Arab Spring context to many other agendas, sustainable development, trade, mm -hmm. etc. Ee, Sayın Dağıtoğlu, şimdi bakınca sağ tarafınızda İsveç Dışişleri Bakanı, solunuzda Brezilya Dışişleri Bakanı. Aslında bu bir ezber bozma girişimi <gülüyor> midir bir yönde de? Malum Türkiye'nin dış politikasının ekseni konusunda da çok e, mülazalar da devam ediyor. E, bu konuda hani Türkiye'nin bu konuda sınırı, limiti, vizyonu nedir? E, 
İsterseniz bunu İngilizce devam ettirelim çünkü tabi nasıl e, uygun görseniz bir kısaca bir soruyu İngilizce'de şey yaparsanız formüle edersiniz. I wanted edersen, to çünkü. ask Minister Davutoğlu um, to his right is the Swedish Foreign Minister to his left is uh, you. Obviously there was much talk about Turkey's foreign policy axis where it's going from now on. So I ask him what this new vision entails. How this trilateral process, what it says about the changing Turkish foreign policy. First of all, let me say uh, thanks uh, for my dear friends uh, to be in Izmir and for bringing their families. That's right. mm -hmm. Antonio's wife is here and my dear son as well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gustav, uh, uh, son of Karl. <laughs> Unfortunately, his wife was not able to come. So we, this is a family gathering, not only a diplomatic gathering. In fact, uh, in this bo in today, in current affairs, there is no axis anymore. There is one axis, it is axis of humanity. And all the issues are interlinked. Whatever happens in Latin America is affecting uh, Europe, or whatever happens in Europe is affecting uh, Middle East and all of us. Therefore, uh, this uh, question of axis is an old uh, mentality from Cold War this axis or against another axis. Now what we need, in fact, this picture today in Izmir shows that there is a global axis and global, uh, there is a need of a global initiative for uh, global peace. Mm -hmm. And this regional peace and global peace is interlinked. And Turkish geographical position and political identity does not uh, accept uh, any border, any limitation. Our horizon is very wide. Our vision is very wide. Like Brazil, like Sweden, <coughs> nobody can say the name Karl Bildt or Swedish diplomacy cannot be limited to Nordic uh, region. Or same, Brazil today is a global uh, power and uh, Antonio is everywhere. He visits Turkey seven times, and sometimes Carl visits Turkey more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not <laughs> <laughs> so. This is, this is, uh, in fact, the new world, and uh, all of us we are trying to achieve uh, a mm -hmm. bright future, bright and peaceful future for humanity and for our people everywhere. Uh, Minister Bild, Turkey obviously is very concerned about rising Islamophobia. I know how instrumental and influential you are in European foreign mm -hmm. policy as well. Uh, Turkish leaders, be it Minister Davutoglu, be it the uh, Prime Minister or the President, they always voice their concern about that. What are your views and what could be done to prevent that, uh, the rising Islamophobia, not just here, but in, uh, not in Europe, but globally? Overall, I've, I've, I'm concerned by tendency towards fragmentation that you find. I mean, Islamophobia is part of it. You also see divisions within Islam, you can see it in other forms, where I think we have, we see jointly the task and sort of we are nations that, also because of our histories, mm -hmm. have an interest in bringing cultures, traditions, nationalities together and combat those forces in our world today that want to fragment, divide, uh, create suspicions against each other. And uh, that is an issue that we are facing in Europe, in our respective societies. We have it. Uh, greatly in parts of the Middle East, as you know. Uh, and I would consider that to be one of the most central tasks that we have in the world today, to counter those particular tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Patriota, we were talking about, as Minister Dovuto has also mentioned, geographical proximity is no longer a consideration. It's more like a similarity of political ideas. Mm -hmm. When you look at Turkey and when you look at Brazil, obviously both have extraordinary civilizations, uh, a very impressive culture. How do you feel close to Turkey in that respect? How would you compare Turkey and Brazil in that respect? Well, there are many similarities and affinities that you can draw between Brazil and Turkey. We have a similar level of development. In fact, our in per capita income is more or less the same level, mm -hmm. uh, with strengths in industry and in agriculture and services. Uh, Turkey has a longer history than Brazil. Our modern history is of 500 years, mm -hmm. but maybe we have more geography than Turkey. So these are complementarities. <laughs> um, but I think another similarity at this point in 2013 is that not only do we have a very strong role regionally um, within very different neighborhoods, of course, but we are also reaching out globally in ways that we have not before. Uh, just to give you an indication of something that's interesting, 
Turkey and Brazil have been the two countries that have increased the most their diplomatic presence in the world in the past 10 years in terms of creating and opening new embassies. Mm -hmm. uh, we both have many embassies in Africa, for example. Brazil with almost 40 embassies and Turkey with, I think, 35 or so mm -hmm. embassies now um, within the African continent. So this opens up possibilities not only for bilateral cooperation, uh, inter-regional cooperation, and also global uh, cooperation within the United Nations system and also with other partners like Sweden. Uh, whenever there is a like-mindedness or there's an affinity in uh, pursuing a certain number of causes or, or issues internationally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Minister Zavutoglu, uh, Mr. Patriota has mentioned the rising embassies in Africa. I know that up until a few years ago there were only 12 embassies in Africa, now we're talking about 34, which is triple the number. Monocle magazine says that, both for Turkey and Brazil, that impressive team of ambassadors. Now you're also here for the ambassadors conference, so uh, can you also compare how your foreign teams uh, are similar in that respect, how they share that vision? In fact, this is a very good question. Not only three ministers, but our diplomatic teams, they know each other very well. Mm -hmm. For example, last year, uh, An uh, Antonia organized uh, the regional ambassadors meeting here in, in Istanbul. Correct. And I was keynote speaker to the to, um, to Brazilian ambassador. And I was as open as them, like our Turkish diplomats. Mm -hmm. And our teams, when we meet, they know each other very well in Tehran. 17 hours, right. we were, the teams were working together uh -huh. during the negotiations uh, in 2010. Uh, same with Swedish diplomats. When we came together, I know almost all of them, and uh, they know mm -hmm. our teams. So in diplomatic yes, circles, this is a famous trio? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, Swedish and Turkish diplomats, uh, they have more chance to meet on European uh, platform in many places. It is usual that we are meeting, and especially on certain common issues, mm -hmm. like Balkan issues or other issues where Carl and myself, as mm -hmm. two friends we are dealing with, we, we are consulting on all issues. Mm -hmm. But with, it is a little bit surprising how Turkish and Brazilian teams are so working together. For example, in UN, mm -hmm. United Nations Security Council, Turkey and Brazil were together there uh, two years ago, and our permanent representatives worked, even still working, the lady ambassador there, I know her, uh, like my own uh, uh, permanent representative there. So mm -hmm. this is a culture. Uh, and uh, because of the similarities of three countries on many issues, and more important, not only issue, but the methods, the diplomatic rhetoric, the new initiatives are so similar, not only ministers, but ambassadors, when they come together, they understand each other very well because they are using the same language, mm -hmm. implementing the same methods. And tomorrow, both of my colleagues, dear friends, they will be addressing to our diplomats as if they are addressing their diplomats. And there will be no uh, problem of understanding each other because we know our psychologies mm -hmm. very well. Uh, Minister Bild, obviously Turkey was a key player, a uh, key political factor in the Arab Spring. How did you see that rising Turkish influence in that region? The uh, obviously, Middle East is a very difficult area and it's going through a transition period. How did you see the Turkish foreign policy play out there? Well, very significantly, obviously, and we, uh, let, let, let me say that we, we greatly admire the generosity that has been shown by not only the, uh, Mr. Davatugl and the Turkish government, but really the Turkish people when it comes to uh, all of the refugees that are coming from the tragedy in Syria. We know from our own experience what a burden it is. And that's why it's important for us to express the appreciation of the world for what, uh, what Turkey is doing. Turkey has been having a very courageous and, and I think important stance. Uh, problems are significant, problems are severe, problems are tragic. But I think it's important to have a very clear stance and combine that with the generosity that Turkey has been showing. Then we are, I mean, the Middle East is our neighborhood. It's even the neighborhood of, of Sweden. We have a lot of people from the Middle East in our country. So we need to work very closely together. The European Union and Turkey, we are bound together um, in an interest in bringing stability and prosperity and democracy, economic growth and future possibilities to these 400 million people of the Arab world that are going to go through transition for quite some time to come. But um, we have a clear recognition in the rest of Europe that this is something that we can't do without Turkey. 
Um, Mr. Patriot, obviously we're coming to the end of the session. I wanted to ask you, this is a very hot subject in Turkey, the permanent members of the UN Security Council. Obviously the world is changing, the balance of powers are changing, and most of the countries that should be represented there are not there. What's Brazil's uh, attitude towards that, the setup in the United Nations and in the Security Council? Well, we believe that global governance issues uh, should be at the forefront of the international agenda. And if you look at, for example, economic and financial cooperation, the G20 has now assumed uh, the premier role internationally uh, with Turkey participating and, of course, the European Union um, as a whole participating with individual members as well. Um, when you look at other areas, however, and peace and security uh, stands out among them, uh, the same phenomenon has been much slower. While there is widespread recognition that the current Security Council is not representative of the uh, distribution of power that one has today, uh, we haven't really been able to find sufficient consensus at the United Nations to reform the Security Council up to this date. Um, the Brazilian position is, of course, that uh, we need to continue trying very hard mm -hmm. and that countries that are ready to assume responsibilities and that represent strong economies, a strong commitment to multilateralism and global outreach uh, should be allowed to play a more significant role because this will ensure that the decisions are more legitimate and that the strategies that are adopted are more widely accepted internationally. Mm -hmm. So we hope that uh, within the foreseeable future and as soon as possible, um, a two-thirds majority or a broad consensus can be reached at the United Nations mm -hmm. on Security Council reform with new permanent and non-permanent members. Mm -hmm. uh, Minister Dautola, obviously we'll have uh, more time to talk about the big foreign policy agenda with you, but before we end this session, as the host of this uh, group as well, do you have a special message to the world as the, this new political, the diplomatic group uh, from Izmir, from the uh, Diplomats Conference? Yes, uh, there is a clear message of all of us that uh, important is not the geographical distance. The important thing is the uh, closeness of uh, the proximity in mentalities, in approaches for the future of humanity. And three uh, peace-loving countries, Turkey, Brazil, Sweden, uh, they came together how to uh, contribute to global peace. Mm -hmm. This is the main message and Izmir is a city of peace uh, and for centuries Izmir has been one of the most uh, colorful mm. multicultural city of all Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, it was not only a port like a window mm -hmm. between Asia and Europe uh, and from Anatolia to Mediterranean and in this uh, city of peace we came together and the message is clear three countries three ministers from Three continents, Turkey is of course in two continents as well, are, uh, are coming together to, uh, to work for the future of all humanity. We are not only representing our nations, but we are representing mm -hmm. all humanity everywhere in the world. And this new initiative is a global initiative working for uh, the future of our next generations. I thank you all so much. It was a pleasure and honor for us to host you here, these three ministers together. And we hope in other capitals of the world, uh, we'll host you again.